take much time. Uh, we are going to start off with the first panel session. Uh, it's on uh, network access control. And for this, uh, we have our session chair, Mr. K.K. Mukhi, who is the founder and principal consultant in NII Consulting. Now, rather than me taking much more time and delaying it uh, furthermore, I would like Mr. Mukhi, you to take over. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Shashikant. Uh, I will be chairing the session, which I am not really sure what it entails, but I will get uh, on to the meat of the session pretty quickly. Uh, we have got a great panel of speakers lined up here, and as you know, this session is on NAC, which is Network Access Control. Um, NAC, we have all been hearing the term uh, floating around. Uh, today is when we hope we will blow the lid off the uh, whole thing and get the enigma resolved. Uh, basically, what is NAC? What are the technology uh, solutions that fall under the umbrella of uh, this term that we call as NAC? Uh, what are the pros and cons of all the solutions that are available? And uh, you know, what are your options and is this the right solution for you given your particular uh, network size and the current set of challenges that you might face in terms of identity and access management and uh, uh, other issues related to information security. So our very first speaker is uh, Govind Ram Murthy. He's a very well-known name. Again, I'll give a very brief introduction so that he can get to uh, his talk. Uh, Ram Murthy is the CEO and Managing Director of Microworld, again an extremely well-known company uh, in India and also overseas. Uh, they've been developing indigenous antivirus and content security solutions since 1993. Uh, today, Microworld has expanded globally and is a leader in information security solutions. Uh, Govan has more than 15 years of experience in developing products, so he is pretty much the right guy to uh, introduce the subject and begin by telling us uh, where things stand and where things will be. So, Govan, all yours. Uh, good morning, uh, good morning, gentlemen. As you can see on my uh, on, on the slide out there, I'll be talking about securing uh, the endpoints in your networks. And the byline for uh, this presentation is going to be: Can we afford to be an ostrich, believing that if we cannot see any attacker, that attacker cannot see us? In today's world, considering the number of devices that we own, which has computational capabilities, storage capabilities, and communication capabilities, this byline becomes the key factor in securing your networks. Let's look at the agenda of uh, this presentation. I'll be talking about the business demands in today's uh, today's times and the parameters affecting the same. I'll be talking about uh, what exactly do you mean by uh, endpoints? Uh, what are the scenarios in today's networked world? What were they in the past and what are there in the present? And what is the solution uh, for the same? Plus the layers of endpoint security that we recommend for small businesses, medium businesses and even large enterprises. Plus we'll, at the end of the presentation we will tackle the points about endpoint security best practices. What are today's business demands? When I say business de demands, what I mean to say is that today all businesses depend on few things. One, they, they are dependent on human resources. Two, they are dependent on networks. Three, they are dependent on web services. Four, they are dependent on storage. And five, and the most important thing, they are dependent on the cloud. When I say the cloud, what I mean is the internet. So the first point is unified networks for email, text chat, web browsing, file sharing, games. These are few of the things that we end up using either in our home networks or in our official networks. Voice, audio, televideo, telepresentations, audio conferencing, video conferencing, web services and today what, uh, what is becoming a phenomenon, what I call as uh, the SNS or the social networking sites where virtually every employee interacts or every child or every parent also interacts. Plus, you need to have users to enjoy the mobility. For example, when I travel, when I travel across the world, the simplest and the most important thing I need is mobility. Mobility of not only my data, because if I am sitting in an airport, I need to connect to the internet to check my mails, number one. I need to look at presentations which my people would have prepared in the office. 
edit it, correct them, put it back on to the cloud, ensure that these are emailed across to different people, plus I might use Wi-Fi to access the net, plus I might possibly use a VoIP on the internet to call up people and communicate with people. And these are all the various communication points which I end up using when I travel. I, and I believe it's the same with you also. So, as I said in my second point, seamless mobility across devices and networks is one of the key factors to business continuity. You need to have earlier, what used to happen was you, we used to carry data in floppies on CDs and that's the, that was the end to it. Today, it's no longer the game. Today, storage, communication is two basic important things which is extremely needed. All the time. Sorry, which is extremely needed for business continuity purposes. Thank you. What are the parameters which affect these business demands? As you know, for business continuity and fast response, your employees, partners and customers need access to the following resources. One is increased access to sensitive information. Today, any piece of data that is there as part of your network is accessible to A, your, your, your employees, two, your partners, three, your customers. It might be either through your in intranet, it might be either through a local area networking system, it could be through a van or it could be possibly through the cloud. You have a mission, mission critical network. When I say mission critical network, what I mean to say is that today not a single hour of downtime in your enterprises can be afforded because we are all we have all become so dependent on communicational and computational facilities available within enterprises. Mobile and remote devices. When I say mobile and remote devices, what I mean to say is smartphones, it could be an iPhone, it could be a USB, it could be a it could be possibly your iPod player, anything. For this wide variety of storage devices and interoperability. Now interoperability is something that everyone is working on. It could possibly be unified communications. It could be unified computational networks or it could also, also mean unified storage networks. What are basically endpoints? Endpoints in simple terminology comprises of basically devices that either have computational capability communication capability and storage capability and endpoints could either be software or hardware in nature when I talk about endpoints let me talk about a simple device an innocuous device like the USB which I am carrying the presentation in this one single small piece of USB two years back three years back maybe this kind of a device was just not available you had you had storage devices which basically could carry about 1.42 megabytes or maximum of, of about 3 to 4 megabytes of data. Today you get devices like this USB which has 16 megabytes of information which can store, which it can store. And this is what I carry and probably major of, majority of you here have some kind of a USB device which you carry in your pockets. Now these are what I call as endpoints. Now let's look at this small instance of a journey of a pen drive which happens normally in most of the organizations. A business executive normally comes along to the office, he makes a presentation and he makes a presentation, probably stores it on his smartphone, comes with the smartphone to the office, tries to do a sync with his local machine so that his address book and data could be synced. He then gives, makes a presentation, gives it on a USB to his secretary. The secretary basically edits this USB probably, takes it home. And once she takes it home, she probably gives it uh, to her, to her uh, she keeps it somewhere. Her child takes it, saves probably some, downloads some kind of, kind of a game or some download some kind of a music, stores it on the same USB, takes it to a, to a internet, internet uh, share room or, or, or a cyber cafe and download that data into a local machine out there and upload the same for sharing either to his uh, Facebook account or possibly to his uh